Welcome to another S&P 500 analysis. Today is October 15, 2022. On Thursday, we saw one of the largest reversal days for the S&P 500. After it has been down nearly 90 points on the latest CPI number, it launched a 194 points reversal. But the following day, the market took back most of the previous session's gain. So will the bear regain control of this market or the bulls just took a breather on Friday? In this S&P 500 analysis, we'll review the market sentiment, the internals, the price action of the S&P 500, and the other major market indexes and see what the market is telling us. Stay tuned. Looking at this S&P 500 weekly chart, we see the S&P 500 had another week with a range of more than 200 points. The range for the week was 220 points and the S&P 500 lost 57 points or 1.55% for the week. It put in a lower weekly low and closed below the declining 10-week and the declining 40-week moving average and continued to form this lower low and lower high downtrend price pattern. Look at this chart here. On Thursday, the S&P 500 had one of the largest reversal day, 194-point reversal. And on Friday, it took back almost all the 90-plus uh, point gain from Thursday. The S&P 500 had a range of 132 points on Friday. It lost 87 points or 2.37%. And also the VIX is still above the 30. It closed on Friday at 32.02. And the put call ratio, although it came back below 1, but it's still within the uh, zone of 0.7 and 1. And it's just barely below 1 post Friday at 0.94. So obviously the uh, market participants are still fearful and also they are risk off and pretty much uh, busy putting on hedges. And the up-down volume ratio was 4 to 1 in favor of the up volume on Thursday with the S&P 500 gaining 2.7% or 93 points, and with a loss of 89 points, or 2.37% on Friday, the up-down volume ratio was 6.5 to 1 in favor of the down volume. So clearly, there was more selling pressure on down day than buying pressure on the up day. And also, the daily advance decline did not show much of a broad market advance on Thursday with only 1,369 more advancing issue than declining issue. While on Friday decline, there were 1,985 more declining issue than advancing issue. So again, this showed broader market participation on the downside than on the upside. And the number of stocks making new 52-week low on Thursday was 934, and on Friday it was 217. Here again, the New York Stock Exchange cumulative AD line is telling us to expect a lower closing low from the S&P 500 as it show a negative divergence between the two. Looking at this NASDAQ chart here, notice the NASDAQ 100 on Thursday. It had a 647 points of range and gained 2.3% of 248 points. While on Friday, the index lost 341 points or 3.1%. This loss is close to the total loss for the week because the NASDAQ 100 lost 347 points or 3.15% for the week. Now notice the NASDAQ up-down volume flipped from Thursday 3 to 1 in favor of the up volume to a 7 to 1 in favor of the down volume on Friday. Much more selling pressure on Friday than buying pressure on Thursday. And also the daily advance declined. The advancing stock outnumbered the declining stock on Thursday by 1,673. But Friday, the declining stock outnumbered the advancing stock by 2,157. The number of new low almost reached 1,000 on Thursday. There were 956 stock make new 52-week low on Thursday and 331 make new 52-week low on Friday. The Nasdaq 100 continued to make lower closing low along with the uh, lower low from the Nasdaq cumulative AD line. So there is no divergence. Now let's take a look at the interest rate, the U.S. dollar, oil, gold, and silver market and see what they are telling us. The 10-year yield closed above 4% at 4.01. Continue to monitor for a move up to uh, this 4.3%. No retreat from the U.S. dollar. It continues to move toward this uh, 114 level here, and I'm still watching for it to come up 
to this uh, 118 area. We notice oil dip back, and that's probably due to a strong dollar. We'll likely see oil to bounce back uh, from this low volume zone here near this uh, 85 area. And if uh, it doesn't bounce, then we could see it uh, come back down and possibly retest this uh, 76, 77 area. And silver pull back and retest this 18 level here. We'll see if we could get a bounce off of this 18 to 17 and a half area. If not, then uh, look for a possible uh, support down here somewhere around this uh, 17, 17 and a half here. Gold did not bounce off this low volume zone near 1700 and it dipped down to this 1650 low volume zone. So we'll watch for a possible bounce off of this zone. Otherwise, look for a retest to this recent low down here near this uh, 1620 level. Now let's take a look at the indexes starting with the S&P 500. Here we see the price on Thursday actually bounce off the low range of the uh, expected move. And on Friday we see a huge sell off and gave back most of Thursday's gain. So now the next week expected range will be another 200 plus point range. The upper range will be between 3,725 to uh, 3,696.90. And the uh, lower range will be uh, between 3469.30 and 3440. Remember this level, this 3393.52. I have alerted you to uh, pay attention to this uh, level uh, in last week's video. Continue to keep an eye on uh, this uh, pre pandemic high level because in the coming week, we could see price dip to this level when it come down and tag the uh, low range of the weekly expected move. We could get a bounce next week, but we'll be unlikely to breach this upper range of the weekly expected move. So for the coming week, watch the 3400 level for the downside and the uh, 3700 level for the upside. Probability favor the uh, 3400 and I tell you why in my summary. Look at this NASDAQ 100 chart. Apple and Tesla finally broke down and it is dragging the NASDAQ 100 with it. On this chart, we see it failed to come up and fill this gap here. But it did stay above the 618 retracement near the uh, 10,600 level. So for the coming week, we'll continue to watch this 9736 level here. This is the pre pandemic high. And when the NASDAQ 100 breaks below the 618 retracement, the pre-pandemic level will be in play. I will give you more price scenario in my Sunday video on the QQQ. And the Russell 2000 made an attempt to try to get back above this 50% uh, retracement level near 1712, but was unable to. Although it is still above the uh, pre-pandemic high, but look for this level to get tested and possibly get breached in the coming week. So if it break below this level, then look for this 618 retracement level near 1536. Just like the QQQ, I will give you my price scenario for the IWM, the ETF for the Russell 2000 in my Sunday video. Look at the Dow Jones Transportation. The Dow Jones Transportation actually finished the week with a small gain. It is holding above this 50% retracement level and well above this corrective low. If we could move about this 13,000 area, then look for this gap to possibly get filled and keep an eye on this 38.2 retracement level. Now, if it dips down and dip below this 50% uh, retracement level, then watch these low get retested and keep an eye on this pre-pandemic high 11,359 area. The Dow Jones Industrial is back above the uh, pre-pandemic high here. It finished the week with a gain of 338 points or 1.15%. It also appeared to be forming a double bottom. Now for the coming week, if we could break above this uh, 30,500 level, that could be a sign that it is breaking this double bottom pattern. Then look for a major move of this 100% major move up here near this uh, 32,000 area. And if it dipped back below this uh, pandemic high, then look for a move to fill this gap from November 2021 near 28,500. And finally, the New York Stock Exchange Composite Index is near its uh, recent closing low here. 
So for the coming week on the downside scenario is to watch for this uh, recent closing low and look for a uh, new closing low and possibly come down and test this 50% retracement level near 13,000. And for the upside, it's basically uh, getting a bounce back up to this uh, 38.2 area, this retracement near the uh, 14,000 level. In summary, we saw an extreme reaction from the market on the latest CPI number. The E-mini S&P 500 dropped 91 handles or 2.5% in one minute after the number was released. And within the first half an hour after the opening bell, it rallied back 190 points. On the surface, it looked like a turnaround from the bottom. But from the daily advance decline and the up-down volume ratio, they told us a different story. With the S&P 500 gaining 2.6% or 90 plus point after this 190 point turnaround, the up-down volume ratio was only 4 to 1 in favor of the up volume and less than 1,400 more advancing stock than declining stock. These figures do not indicate it was a broad market rally with heavy buying pressure. Instead, they're clearly telling us it was a massive short squeeze. And at the end of the week, a negative divergence between the S&P 500 and the New York Stock Exchange cumulative AD line, along with strong downside internals, the S&P 500 is likely to continue to go lower and the pre-pandemic high near the 3400 level will likely be tagged. So until this level has been taken out, any rip on the upside should be met with skepticism. Be patient. Let the market tell you when it has bottomed. Definitely last week's low is not a bottom. So what do you think? Do you agree there will be more downside or you believe the market has seen the bottom? Let us know in the comment section below and be sure to smash the thumbs up to help promote this video on YouTube. Thank you for watching and stay safe.